Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Lord Andy Coyne and welcome to Snapmares Media and today I am interviewing the prodigy, Tommy Knight. Sir, how are you? How was your flight to Melbourne? Doing alright, lovely to see you again Andy. Really good to see you. It man. was a good flight, I'm happy to be here. I was going to say, the last time I saw you was 2017, you came over for a triple threat contest for MCW mm -hmm. and uh, that was obviously your first taste of Melbourne. It's, yeah. How come we've not seen you back since? Look, the opportunity just wasn't there. Hoping to change that very shortly. Happy to be back in uh, in Melbourne for Deathmatch Down Under. Fantastic. Yeah. So anyway, let's let's go back a bit. Let's go back to when you were a wee nipper. What <laughs> made you fall in love with wrestling? What is it about wrestling that just captivated your young and innocent mind? The first thing I ever saw was uh, Triple H carve someone's head open with a screwdriver. Nice. And that was the first, like, that can't be real. No way. There's no <laughs> way they'd let someone do that on TV. And then I was about five years old. And from there, I was just, I had to see what happened next. I was like, he got to be arrested, surely. And from there, it was just, oh, I got introduced to The Rock, Stone Cold, you know, uh, uh, an array of characters that I was just like, this is, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So, so obviously, as a fan, how did you sort of move into wrestling professionally? I mean, what was your introduction? So what happened was, when I was young, uh, I ended up stopping watching it because so many people were on me about being a pro wrestling fan. It wasn't like the cool... Eventually, it stopped being the cool thing. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And so... I, so yeah, exactly. I stopped watching and I got into mixed martial arts and mm -hmm. I started fighting uh, professionally out of Trinity MMA in South Australia. From there, I my, after my last fight in Sydney, I ended up taking time off and, it, and what was only supposed to be a little hiatus ended up being about six months off right. of not doing anything. And my coach, Nick Hughes, uh, ended up messaging me and saying, look man, you need an outlet and you need something to do. You can't just do nothing. Yeah. It's not who you are. And he sent me a, a application for a tryout at Wrestle Rampage. And a lot of, uh, so, I was looking at Wrestle Rampage and ACW. They were the two schools that I was looking at. I knew the owner of ACW, but Damien Slater had come to train at Trinity. I knew who he was. I'd had it explained to me who he was exactly. The Cruiserweight Classic uh, uh, being one of the best wrestlers in Australia. And generally a handsome devil. Exactly, that too. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I uh, hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and having Damien Slater was a big help of being like, well, if they've got someone like that as their instructor, or one of their instructors, then you know that's clearly the place that I want to be. So no disrespect to ACW, they just didn't have Damien Slater. I was going to say, I mean, Damien Slater at the moment is actually releasing a series of videos yeah. online showing some of the, the, the finer techniques and the basics. And do you know what? As someone who used to train Yonks ago, we're talking about two decades ago here. It's I love watching those videos. There's nothing like the World Beater Wrestling on YouTube uh, that you can get outside of a wrestling school. No. I had a friend ask me uh, for recommendations of anything that was like that to break down how, uh, like how to wrestle. And I was, there's nothing. There's that's that's it. Yeah, you have that, and you have a lot of really bad tutorials. <laughs> There's nothing. Usually in someone's backyard. Exactly, like someone's trampoline. backyard that they've managed to scrounge together a ring somehow and they're just, uh, this is my best guess on how to do. Oh, I, I also love how they usually start those videos with, mm -hmm. don't try this. Oh, part. always. And that's exactly what they're in the middle of doing. And it's like, you've never, you don't know how <laughs> to do that. Here's how you do a diamond cut. Yeah, exactly. Next thing you know, their shin just and shatters into One of my favorites pieces. is, this is how to do a Jeff Hardy swanton bomb. And he lands it and you just hear, <laughs> <laughs> And then he gets up and they're like, you okay? Yeah, I hurt my butt. I'm sure you did, pal. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, you, you've ruined my list of questions because you <laughs> talked about MMA and I was only going to get that at question six. But <laughs> when, actually, but one thing I do like mm. is um, when I've often found that when somebody has mm. done martial arts before, mm. um, obviously Jake Andrew Arthur being a classic example, obviously being a, a judo competitor, a judo yes. champion, yes. Uh, Commonwealth and Olympic, um, obviously, those experiences, I presume they transfer quite well into wrestling and almost give you a basis to start working on. They do. It forms a very good bedrock for having experience without having experience, if that makes sense. So a lot of the, the principles of uh, the f making up a foundation of a pro wrestler, of like learning how to move around the ring, how to bump, how to, to take everything, uh, you know, so that you don't hurt yourself, a lot of that is, is that all comes from martial arts. Like pro wrestling is supposed to be a martial art and having a basis in that, like Jake, like myself, um, 
is a really, really good foundation. Fantastic. Um, how did you get into, uh, how did you find your time at Wrestle Rampage sort of training there? Um, brutal at first. So the tryout, I, the tryouts used to be even harder than they are now. Mm. Like the guys that came before me are machines. Yeah. Um, what I did is I, ba I didn't have to do a tryout per se. I was given a, a training session. Yep. That was their tryout is because I was the only person there. I was the only person at my tryout. So I didn't know anybody, and they basically well, just... Well, nobody else turns up, you're not going to know. Oh, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, so I I, uh, I sat in on what was basic, a basic training session for them, yeah. and I couldn't walk for a week afterwards, because I was not in any physical condition to like I am now. And it was, yeah, it was a real eye-opener of, oh, these guys are incredible athletes, and this, if this is the training that we do, that because they made that very clear, of like, we're not going to do anything that we don't do standard. This is what we do three, five, three to five days a week, yeah. every week. This is not special, this is not more difficult, this is, this is what we do. And that, that left me, as I said, incapable of walking for a week. Now, it's interesting you were talking about, you know, how, not, not challenge is not the right mm. word, but obviously it's very sort of real training, I yeah. think, for lack of a better term. Mm. Um, it was interesting talking about that because I was listening to your On The Term Buckle interview mm. Um, which you did earlier last week, I believe. Yeah. And one thing that I thought was interesting, you were talking about the New Japan Dojo mm -hmm. that you went to, and yeah. I think in it you were saying that when they started their warm-ups and their training, mm -hmm. for you it was almost another day in the office, and for a lot of people it was a real eye-opener for them yeah. to suddenly go from whatever their training school does to this incredibly high elite level mm. of fitness. It was, that was the thing, is I was so well prepared for that. Like, there was... It was interesting to see how people crumbled really early. Like they, a lot of they all persevered. They all kept going. Yep. So like credit to them, but you could see that they didn't have experience in that style of training, just by the way they did things. Like mm. it, when you're doing squats and you're doing, you know, you're going to do hundreds and hundreds of squats yep. in a set, like in one go. Most people won't do it at a sprint. They tend to burn out. Yeah. That was not the case for these guys. They were out to prove something, and every time it was my turn to count, I would try and slow it down as much as I could. Cause I, I, I'm, I know it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. You got to, you just got to keep going. But when people have something to prove, they get a bit silly. They sort of shoot stuff. out the first twenty. Yeah, and then know. they gasp by the time they get to squat four hundred or five hundred, and they can't move. Squat four hundred. Yeah, and Jesus. it was, it was the same. Like eventually, after that, they they got it. Yeah. Like that, that was the first thing we did. And I dare say that was exactly why it's like, this is what we're about. And I, as I said, I was privy to that because I trained with Wrestle Rampage and we did all of that stuff. That's so what think, we did. You are talking to a guy who goes to a gym, does like 20 squats and then he gets out of the phone and he's like posing. In the oh, room, like that's like the only way to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. But don't take a photo. It, it doesn't, never, you never get games. So don't take any offense when I say this, mm. you're fairly big person. Yeah. You're a heavyweight, yeah, obviously, I am. <laughs> and obviously you'll be competing in a heavyweight contest here mm -hmm. today. Um, what? Who are your inspirations for big men? Uh, so I, <laughs> uh, so I used who to be inspired. Who was your ins inspiring my, big boy? My inspire. There's this, there's two parts of that. There's yep. the person that inspired me, which was Rey Mysterio, and it was heartbreaking when I found out probably not going to be the next Rey Mysterio. <laughs> And my coach. I would love to see that. Oh, I would love to Can see I that too. Can I please book you on the show <laughs> as a luchador? <laughs> but my coach just took me aside. So this was specifically AJ Istria and Jonah Rock took me aside. And they were like, look, these, these are the things that you need to watch. We know you haven't experienced this. Yep. So we're going to show you, we're going to start you down this path. What you do with that is up to you. We're going to, and if you take to it, then we can encourage you however you see fit. They showed me Kento Kobashi was the big one. Yeah. Because that was uh, one of Jonah's favorites, if not his favorite wrestler, it's one of Istria's favorites. And he's now one of my favorites and one of the people that really inspired me. Vader was another one. The more I watched him, especially with his with his stuff in Japan and learning to to make everything mean something, to make to, to not take his size for granted yep. was just uh, very, very important. And so they're the, they're two of the big ones. Uh, Takeyama's another one. Um, for the for Japan, that's probably a really good start of, of guys that if, if you're looking for inspiration for how to wrestle big, yeah. you can't really go out past at Vader, Kobashi, Takeyama. 
They're all incredible. I was going to say, I kind of get the vibe that you have uh, from your answers, mm. uh, that you have a lot of Japanese influences in your style. I mean, you do dress very ishi like Yes. Um, I was going to say, is there any particular period or is there any particular wrestlers who you really love from the Japanese uh, sort of scene? Yeah, so the 90s All Japan stuff, the King's Road style, I, uh, I touched on that in the Turnbuckle interview on the turnbuckle um that stuff is what really got me excited about wrestling and being like okay if i can wrestle like that if i can get to do that that's what's important to me because that's the stuff that gets me excited yeah so that's what i want to share with people I'll tell you one thing that is gonna suit you very well here at deathmatch down under because i do know that the promoters behind this promotion yeah. are also a fan of that style. So They're a very big fan of the same oh, stuff. Oh, they are. I think that's yeah. going to be an absolutely fantastic marriage. Mm. Um, what's wrestling like in Adelaide? I mean, I've not had the... I've, I've been to Radelaide. Mm -hmm. um, I know I asked you that question if Adelaide was indeed Radelaide. Uh, uh, of course it is. <laughs> For two months a year. Two months a year. Yeah, and that's exactly, it. and then we go to sleep. But yes, I did. I have yeah. flown there as a, as a holiday. Annoyingly, mm. uh, there was a Wrestle Rampage show on, mm -hmm. but my wife would not allow me to go. Oh, that's very upsetting. It was. Anyway, but... Um, Adelaide's wrestling scene. Mm. I mean, how would you describe it? From somebody from Melbourne looking at Adelaide, mm. is it a fair statement to say that there's some limitations. Yes, mainly because of like we don't have like Melbourne has what five six million people and we have one and a half, so yeah. you're appealing to a much smaller market. Sure. And the problem that we face, I think, is that it's there's a handful of people that will go to wrestling no matter where it is, what's going on. That's why you tend to try and like for us, we try and put shows on. There's a, there's a few shows in Adelaide, not just Rampage, but. I know that we go out of our way to make sure that when we put on a show, we're the only show in town that day because we're otherwise we're just taking people from like they go to every show. Yeah, sure. You, why make them choose? Oh yeah, it's, it's you know it's it's, 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 it's too small a fan base to, to be dividing like that. And it's like yeah, look, we got we have people that exclusively come to our shows. Uh, the other promotions have the same, I imagine. But there is a very hardcore t contingent of fans that will go to everything that they can get their hands on, and there's no reason for us to divide that because, as I said, the challenge is the fact that we we don't have a big fan base in Adelaide compared to Melbourne, compared to Sydney, um, and that's like that's the reality of where we live. We know that, but the biggest thing is that as long as we put on the highest quality wrestling that we can, and I know, like I watch the wrestling from around Australia, and I'm confident in saying that we measure up to anybody as far as in-ring product that like you can stack us against anyone oh sure absolutely now one thing that was interesting when i was listening to the on the turnbuckle interview is mm. that you were talking about this idea of you have this um this adelaide family uh, mm. i think you obviously noted yourself and mm. rap daddy for example rap yes. daddy has also come over to melbourne had competed for mcw yes. as well against slex in a very fun match mm. where on commentary i basically filled it with cheese puns no oh, was... he loves it <laughs> i bet he does i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna say when is it time to sort of look beyond your borders when is it time to go do you know what Adelaide's my home but I need to get a bit more experience with a wider range of guys when you're confident that you can do that with it when when you're confident that you can do what you do with the people that you know mm -hmm. with anyone else sure. when I can go I can have a great match with Rat Daddy I can have a great match with Corn Dog. I can have a great match with Corey Adams I can have a great match with uh, Lily Blaze yeah but I'm confident that I can have a great match with Richie Taylor. I can have a great match with Slex. I can have a great match with Mick Moretti. I can have a great match with whoever that I have never met before, that I've, uh, I've, the first time I meet them is when I'm about to fight them. Yeah, sure. You know, and when I know that I can still live up to my expectations and perform at a level that I'm, I deem acceptable, that's when I'm okay traveling. Some people need to be pushed. Mm -hmm. Like they need, they're uncomfortable being uncomfortable. Yep, I and you. you can't do that in wrestling. You have to no, be comfortable not. being uncomfortable. Now, one thing was interesting. I did have a look at uh, went onto the cagematch.net and I had a look at the matches mm -hmm. that you've had so far. It's actually, it's it's actually surprising mm. to when I realised that you've actually only been involved in wrestling for what three years, yeah. three four years. So twenty seventeen was my debut. Right. So this is this is my fourth year now. Amazing. So actually, when I saw you in Melbourne, mm. that was actually the first year of your career. Yeah. 
That's absolutely astounding. But as a result, you, you look at your various matches and you realize there's a lot of notable names from the Australian wrestling scene you have not had the opportunity to step into the ring with. Yeah. Surely there's a bucket list. There is. As far as Australian wrestling, I think if you look at any promotion in Australia, anybody that would be considered one of their best guys, that's like I've had I've been lucky with Rampage I've gotten to wrestle almost everyone that I've wanted to mm -hmm. there's a few guys still left that I've never had the chance to wrestle one-on-one -on -one or at all but mostly I've been pretty lucky with that with MCW there's a bunch of guys like you know Slex uh, Brooksy uh, I got to wrestle Dowie in a triple threat I'd wrestle him in a singles match too um, Jake Andrew Arthur's another one that I think would be great Caveman Ugg I've come close to wrestling on a number of occasions and it's just never worked out but he's a, he's a big one for me. If you go to PWA, I got to wrestle Mick Moretti. I'd love to wrestle him again. Yep. Bonza. Um, a big one for me would be to wrestle uh, uh, Ricky South or Sam Osborne. Yep. I love both those guys. They both wrestle a style that I can appreciate. Um, and another one is Steph. Uh, Steph DeLander. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Steph DeLander uh, is that's something that a couple of people have asked me about if I would ever wrestle her, and absolutely. Well, I was going to say, I, I do like the movement that Australian wrestling is taking and the idea of you know, intergender or no gender boundaries sort of becoming more and more accepted. I do know that Steph Delander is coming to Deathmatch Down Under's next show, mm -hmm. smashing sandcastles, and she'll be competing against a male opponent. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, I'm not sure I'm Tom yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think that would be an awesome match to yeah. watch. Okay, so COVID is over. Mm -hmm. well, Covid, <laughs> to some extent, is over, yeah. um, and obviously there's a bit more freedom. And hopefully, as we get deeper into 2021, mm. what are the short-term goals? What are you hoping to accomplish this year? To get back out into Australian wrestling and make people remember me. Fantastic. So, and one question, because surely, I mean, I had to ask this question. Mm. Do you ever have any plans, whether short, mid, or long-term, to go over to Japan? Yes, very much so. I was supposed to be in Japan before Covid happened. Yeah. So. Unfortunately for me, that didn't happen. We'll see what happens, but hopefully that's in my near future rather than my far future. Lovely. Well, look, thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us. Really appreciate it, and I want to wish you all the luck as you smash Richie Taylor's face off tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Snapmares.